The previous lessons showed us general techniques in solving differential equations. It's now time to move into applying these techniques. What's up guys and welcome to Differential Equations. Modeling is the process describing a physical situation in terms of mathematical equations, which is in our case differential equations. Almost all of the differential equations you will be using in your future employment are the result of modeling of an equation of someone. Now, in the coming lessons, you will be applying the differential equation techniques we have learned to solving a model differential equation. It would be impossible to cover, to cover everything, but you will be introduced to the process of modeling and show you basic concepts involving modeling. But first, our gospel thought. Scripture for today is found in Ephesians 1.3. It says, Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. Being a student at school can be challenging. Whether you struggle with schoolwork, with friendships, or what you wear, this verse is an encouragement for you today. This verse tells us that we are blessed. That means we can expect good things to happen to us. We don't have to walk the halls of our school with our heads down, feeling bad about ourselves. Instead, we can hold our head up high because we are blessed. Don't let the school blues get you down. Choose to focus on the fact that you are blessed, which means you're able to conquer everything that comes your way today. As Lasallians, may we respond in prayer and say, I will continue, O oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of thee. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, during the ancient times, the Greeks adopted the Babylonian practices of careful measurement and detailed observations. They sought to understand nature by logical analysis. You see, Aristotle's convincing arguments on his time, during his time, that the world was not flat but spherical led to the intellectuals of that day to ponder the question, what is the circumference of the earth? So imagine, during his time, Christ was not even born yet. And yet, the question that was lingering on their thoughts, at least among the intellectuals of their time, was what was or what is the circumference of the earth? And it was astonishing that Erat Eratosthenes, who was born before Christ, 276 BC to 195 BC, who was a chief librarian at the Library of Alexandria, managed to obtain a fairly accurate answer to this problem without even leaving the ancient city of Alexandria. Hindi siya assumptionista, but his method involved certain assumptions. And what are those assumptions and simplifications that he made? Ilan sa mga ito ay ito? Una, that the earth is a perfect sphere. Okay? Second, that the sun's rays travel parallel paths. What else? The, that the city of um, Cyrene, where uh, someone told him that uh, during noontime, hindi daw nakikita yung shadows, was around 5,000 stadia or around 9,250 kilometers due south of the Asian city of Alexandria. And so on, many assumptions that he made. Now, with these idealizations of Erath Eratosthenes, he created a mathematical context in which the principles of geometry could be applied. It's mind-blowing to know that the discrepancy between Erath Eratosthenes' computation, which was 40,000 kilometers, is just about 7 kilometers off no? the modern measurement. He measured around 40,000 kilometers, but, um, but the modern measurement 
uh, had it around 40,000, 7.863 kilometers. Wow! That's almost uh, near uh, 40,000. And imagine during his time with no equipment and technology that we have now. That's pretty amazing. Now, today as scientists, today as scientists seek to further our understanding of nature and as engineers, Taeyeon, who seek on a more well, programmatic level to find answers to technical problems, the technique of representing our real world, okay, in mathematical terms has become an invaluable tool. This process of mimicking reality by using the language of mathematics is known as mathematical modeling. Now, our work as engineers is to solve technical problems by using tools to estimate, simulate, and translate the real-world problems in terms of math models. Now, while technology has progressed, alam natin yan, marami na tayong tools na nagagamit ngayon, and we can compute hard mathematical computations because of computers. Actually, uh, the technology as we know it has progressed, right? And that the use of computer-aided tools like CAD for civil engineers, PCB um, layout softwares for us ECEs, no? uh, software simulators, renderers, etc. really have paid, paved the way to an easier computation and engineering work. Now, the understanding, the benefits of understanding how mathematical modeling gives one, gives you students the tools to analytically probe further. Yeah. So as you can see on uh, our graph below, I saw this uh, very nice quote from Theodore von Karman. What is the difference between a scientist and an, enge and an engineer? Sabi ni Theodore von Karman, scientists discover the world that exists, but engineers create the world that never was. As you can see as well dun sa meme natin on the right, science seeks to, well, discover how it works. Engineering makes it work, <laughs> okay, on a pragmatic level. Although pragmatically, yes. Now, let's talk about mathematical modeling. Uh, I, la I like how mathforteaching.com illustrates what mathematical modeling is. In here, we can see how the dynamics between the real world and the math world come into play. Um, although mathematical modeling really... Uh, is a huge um, area that could not really be covered in a single topic nor in a single course. We will try and aim to make simplifications in terms of um, uh, discussing this uh, very important topic. So, as you can see here, um, uh, it, uh, the areas or the translations or the domains, if I could say, you know, of um, the real world is uh, and the math world are seen in this um, graphic no in mathematical modeling what we're all we're, we're trying to do is to translate real world problems into from the real world domain to the math world domain and how do we do that of course having a real world problem knowing that real world problem the first step is to translate that real world problem into a math problem and now that we have a math problem we make assumptions no for some purposes it may be perfectly uh, within reason to be content with low resolution models for example if uh, you may already be aware that in in your uh, previous physics courses uh, the drag force, di ba? O, during free fall, yung mga examples there, we don't usually consider yung drag force or yung retarding force of air friction. We, we usually ignore those in modeling for an easier analysis of the situation. But if you are a scientist no, whose job is to accurately predict the flight path of a long-range projectile, for example, a missile no, for an army uh, application. Aba, ay kailangan talaga specific and you must take account the air resistance 
and other factors pa like for example yung curvature of the earth diba? so it really depends on the application but um it is sometimes fine to make uh, a lot of assumptions and to remove certain factors to make simplifications no? so we could analyze it uh, a situation further now after that after that sim uh, assumptions or simplifications we are now ready to identify or construct a math model no that fits the problem yon so we will see this in play in our coming um, examples later on. Now, after identifying or constructing a math model that fits the situation, we are, we are now then to solve the constructed math model and interpret the results that we have gathered. Now, after that, of course, this is then in turn can now be implemented and applied as a real-world solution. And then, of course, kung meron pa siyang discrepancy, uh, back to the real-world problem, math problem, make assumptions, and the loop goes on and on and on until the problem is fully solved. So, that's how mathematical modeling works. Now, as mentioned earlier, it would be perfectly fine no, to be content with low-resolution models. We are actually in that process compartmentalizing the problem by only taking into consideration a particular area within an interested region. We call this black box modeling. In science, computing, and engineering, a black box is a device, system, or object which can be viewed in terms of its inputs and outputs or transfer characteristics without any knowledge of its internal workings. Its implementation is opaque, meaning black, no? Almost anything might be referred to as a black box. For example, a transistor, an engine, an algorithm, the human brain, or an institution, or a government. Now, this is important because uh, the, uh, a model may help to explain a system and to study the effects of different components to make predictions about uh, behavior. Yeah. So as you can see on the figure, um, this is what we call a system that we're trying to analyze, a black box. We, com you, we compartmentalized it. No, uh, for example, uh, if, you, if you have a huge electronic system and we want to understand uh, the output or what is happening inside a particular part no, of that circuit, then we create a black box analysis of it by compartmentalizing it. Is it if we see na yung output response na is that the signal has been amplified, then perhaps there has been an amplification or a transistor inside that may have caused it. So through black boxing, we are actually just limiting our domain no, by focusing on a particular region from the interested area. So these are just some of the concepts no, that, you will, that will be discussed with you in further length as you progress in your engineering journey. Now, in this course, in, at least in our um, subject, TENGM210, we will be looking at different applications of differential equations. We have actually, I think, six applications in our course. There are many applications of this, but we will be focusing mainly on those uh, that are the general and that we'll, we will be mostly using in our future studies, as well as those that... Uh, are touched in the board exam. So we will be tackling about growth and decay, which has two uh, kinds of models that we'll be touching. Uh, Malthusian and uh, Verhulstian. We have mixtures, Newton's law of cooling, simple electric circuits, geometric applications, and then, and then Newtonian mechanics. But for this lecture, we will be focusing on growth and decay, and we will be looking at two kinds of models. And that is um, the Malthusian or the exponential model. And number two, the Verhulstian or the logistic model. Let's take a look on the first model. Let's take a look at the Malthusian or exponential model. Okay. 
Now, the application of differential equations lie on those objects or elements which continually undergo change, right? Some examples are, of course, bacteria, no? That as uh, the population, no? We call, uh, let us call that a population. The population of the bacteria increases its amount with respect as time increases, no? They are proportional. Another example pa that we can see is the radioactive element, a radioactive element. Why? Because as time progresses, yung kanya namang strength or energy decreases. Yan. So kanina, there has, we see in the bacteria growth. Sa radioactive naman, we see decay. Now, import, most importantly, uh, of course, in our study, the study of human, we can, we can uh, see the uh, phenomenon of growth and decay in people. Yeah. Beautiful people, right? Yes or yes. The dynamics of human population show growth and decay in birth and in death. Okay. Now, let us suppose, no? <clears throat> let us suppose that it may be possible that the rate at which the amount of an element or object is proportional or only approximately proportional to the amount at any instant. In which case, the complete behavior of the element or object as it undergoes change may be defined but by an exponential function in the following manner. Okay, ano daw uli? Sabihin na natin, let us suppose that uh, proportional daw yung rate of change saan? Sa element or amount of element that is present at any instant. In other words, kung sabihin na natin, let P be the amount the amount of the element and let DP over DT be the rate Of the amount, the rate of P. Well, yes, the amount of the element. So, what is the relationship between the rate now and the amount of the element as per this, as per the statement kanina na binasa natin? The relationship now is they are directly proportional. So, if they are directly proportional, then dP over dT is directly proportional to P. Right? At kung meron tayong direct proportionality na relationship, pwede tayo mag-introduce ng proportionality constant. So that is k. Let k be our proportionality constant. So that's dp equals k from our algebra, naalala pa, then p. Yan. So what we can see here is a, is a differential equation. Ano? We can further see this here. No? Sinulat ko lang siya para makita natin yung flow ng logic. Yan. And we can further solve yung ating DE, since meron tayong differential equation dito, we can see that this is variable separable. So if we put P on this side, ito yan, no? and put DT on the other side, so cross multiply, so to speak, uh, we have KDT, and then integrating both sides, magkakaroon tayo ng LNP and then KT plus C. Okay, and then of course, if we raise this all to E, we will eliminate ln and we're left with P, E raised to KT plus C. This portion here is E raised to KT plus C. Tama. But recall that E raised to M plus N is also equal to E raised to M multiplied by Oops, e raised to n. Yan. So, yung ating e raised to kt plus c will now be equal to e raised to kt multiplied by e raised to c. But we know that e raised to c is also equal to c. Yun. Kaya tayo nagkaroon ng c e raised to kt. This c here becomes C here. Gets? 
Kaya, meron tayong P equals E raised to KT. Alright. Now, if we have a differential equation here, where of course P is the amount, or rather, ito yung, hindi pala siya differential equation, rather a solution to that differential equation, itong P equals C E raised to KT, where P is the amount of the element or object at any time instant. We will notice, or we should take note, that for the basic equation, itong equation ito, P is equal to C E raised to KT, to be completely defined, okay, we need two boundary conditions that are necessary for the determination of the arbitrary constant C and K. So, maari lang natin masolve ang DE na to kapag ka-identify natin yung dalawa nating constants. Which is C and which is K. Arbitrary constants. Now, from the resulting basic equation, the law that defines this process is termed as law of exponential change. Kaya siya naging exponential model because of the function of E here na na-derive nga natin kanina kung saan ang galing. Okay? Kaya siya tinawag na law of exponential change. Now, when k, in this case, yung ating uh, exponential model, is greater than zero, the change is known as growth. But when k is negative or less than zero, the change is called decay. Okay? So, makikita na kaagad natin dito sa value ng k natin, if it is growing or if it is decaying. Now, one of the earliest attempts to model human population, at least the growth of the human population, by means of mathematics was uh, by the English economist named Thomas Malthus in 1798. Now, basically, the idea behind the Malthusian model is the assumption that the rate at which the population of a country grows at a certain time that is proportional to the total population of the country at that time. Ito nga yun. Sabi ni Malthus sa kanyang pag-aaral, the rate daw at which the population of a country grows at a certain time, let's call it T, is proportional to the, pro the total population of the country at that time. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Yung daw rate ng pagdami ay... Uh, proportional sa total population ng country. Ibig sabihin, pag tumaas yung rate, tataas din yung total population. Which is very obvious. Pag bumaba yung rate, maaring merong pagbaba din sa total population. If we say that the population, let us uh, assign P. Let P of T denote that the total population at any time T uh, be that population nga. Then, the rate dP over dt is directly proportional to P. Ito nga yung dinemonstrate natin kanina. And by introducing a proportionality constant, we have dp over dt equals k and p, where k is the constant of proportionality. And that k is greater than zero kapag ka growth model siya. Okay. Now, hindi lamang sa population, at least ng human beings natin siya makita, kagaya nga nang nabanggit ko kanina, meron din sa bacteria, radioactive material. Kagaya na lamang dito sa second natin, which is radioactive decay. So radioactive decay naman, the rate at which the nuclei of a substance decay is proportional to the amount of the substance remaining. Substance remaining. If, if A of T of the substance remaining at time T, then the rate, no, the rate at which the nuclei of the substance decay, ito yun, dA over dT, is directly proportional to the remaining substance A. Kagaya din kanina, if there is a proportional relationship, we can introduce a proportionality constant. For k here, kung siya ay radioactive decay, ay less than zero. Maliban doon, so we are still talking about exponential model, no? Makikita din natin na this is uh, applicable to interest rates. Eh, such that the growth of capital S when an annual rate of interest R is compounded continuously. So, ito yung keyword natin, ano? Compounded continuously. Now, meron kayong engineering economics and you will be tackling uh, uh, about interests, about supply and demand in that course. But, uh, in this course naman sa atin, sa context natin, the interest rates we're going to solve and see how this exponential model applies is yung compounded continuously. So, take note of that, compounded continuously. Now, if S of T is the capital at time T, then the rate no, 
of change of that capital S uh, uh, is proportional to the sorry the total uh, the total uh, capital S. So kung may relationship yung yung rate of change at saka yung total capital, then again we can introduce a proportionality constant we can call R, where R is a constant of proportionality and that R is greater than zero. Okay. Now, now mathematical models are often accompanied by certain side conditions. Ito nga yung nabanggit natin kanina dun sa ating previous slide wherein we explained that for us to be able to solve for C and for us to be able to solve for K, there must be two boundary conditions. So, yun nga, mathematical models are often accompanied by certain side conditions. For example, in the population and radioactive decay models, we would expect to know in turn, the initial population, p naught, and the initial amount of radioactive substance, a naught, on the other hand. If the initial point in time is taken to be t is equal to 0, then we know that p, initially, ito nga, when t is equal to 0, is equal to p naught. So, yun yung ating determination. And daw ulit, ito yung tinatawag nating initial value condition or initial value problem. And that is when t is equal to 0, the population is initially p naught, p sub 0. Ganon din dun sa a, notation lang yung pinagkaiba, a equals a naught. So this is what we call the initial value problem. No? In other words, the mathematical model can consist of either an initial value problem or a boundary value problem. Okay. So take note of this. Initially, yun nga, uh, we must set a reference where we should start. And that is let t be equal to zero. And initially, if that is our time, the initial population is denoted as p naught or p sub zero. Okay. Now, another um, application of this exponential model is in what we call carbon dating. Carbon-14 dating, also called as radiocarbon dating, uh, is a method of age determination that depends upon the decay to nitrogen of radiocarbon or C14. C14 is continually formed in nature by the interaction of neutrons with nitrogen-14 in the Earth's atmosphere. The neutrons required for this reaction are produced by cosmic rays interacting with the atmosphere. Now, carbon dating is limited to organic materials lang, no? The method used by most archaeologists. Now, for the ge geologists na ang, ang study is about rocks and the age of the earth, they don't use carbon dating, no? They use what they call radiometric dating. Now, carbon dating depends on how many number of substance remains. Take note of that. Carbon dating depends on how many sub... The, uh, how many number of substance remains. Now, another important parameter in carbon dating is what we call half-life. Half-life in radioactivity is the interval of time required for one half of the nuclei, atomic nuclei of a radioactive sample to decay, which means to change spontaneously into other nuclear species by emitting particles and energy. Or equivalently, the time interval required for the number of disintegrations per second of the radioactive material to decrease by one half. Ito, tandaan nyo maigi. For C14, for C14, or carbon-14, the half-life is 5730. The half-life is 5730. In other words, When t is equal to 5730, ito daw yung kanyang years, the amount of the life of C14, let's call it R, is equal to 1 half R0. Yan, 1 half R0. Yun daw yung half life. Okay? This is the half-life of C14. Okay. So, tatanan nyo maigi yan. The half-life is the amount R. Ibig sabihin, initially, that's one half 
of R0 has an age of 5,730 years. Okay. Now, we have already discussed in adding first model, which is the Malthusian or exponential model. We'll now be discussing next. What we will now be discussing next is uh, the Verhulstian or the logistic model. Anong meron dito kay uh, Verhulstian model? Uh, ang problema kasi ganito, dun sa Malthusian model, one problem with the Malthusian model is its prediction that as time goes on, the population grows without bound. This is actually unrealistic in a real-world setting kasi there are various factors that limit the rate of growth of a particular population. And ano yung mga yun? May birth rate, may death rate, merong food supply, of course, may predators, and so on and so forth. Maraming factors na maaaring consider in, in modeling for the growth or the population for a particular um, area. Or for, let's say, for example, not only humans, bacteria, animals, Yan. So, for a generic population, there are many factors to consider. So, a natural question to ask is whether the population growth rate stays constant or whether it changes over time. At yun yung tinray na sagutin ni Verhulst, no? Because in 1840, around 40 years after ma-develop ni Malthus yung kanyang model, a mathematician biologist named P.F. Verhulst introduced the logistics equation. At ito daw yung logistics equation. We have dp over dt equals k p multiplied by quantity m minus p, where p of t is the population and m is the limiting population or the carrying capacity. Okay? So, Um, eventually, biologists have found that <clears throat> in many biological systems, the, the, uh, the population grows until a certain steady state population is reached. At yun nga yung ating carrying capacity. This possibility is not taken into account with the exponential growth. Ni siya consider ni Malthus noong time na yun because of perhaps limited data. Yun. However, the concept of carrying capacity allows for the possibility that in a given area, only a certain number of given organisms or animal can thrive without running into resource issues. So, yun yung difference ni Malthus at ni Verhulst. Okay, Malthus, medyo dependent lang siya on the birth rate. Hindi niya consider yung other factors. So, as I've said earlier, okay lang yun at some point, no? Na low resolution muna yung i-consider natin. Yun nga, ang problem lang kay Malthus is that as the data set becomes larger, it becomes inaccurate. Kaya itong si Malthus, ah, sorry, itong si Verhulst, he developed another uh, logistic equation that considered a limiting or carrying capacity para hindi mag-grow out of bound yung model natin. Now, there are many, a lot of population models that are out there for consideration. But um, in, in our case, in this course, we'll only consider these two, of course, due to time and kung masyado namang marami. That's why in your projects, I would advise that you look for other models. If, you, if it is your interest to look at, to predict a model or rather to predict a population of a particular um, phenomenon, then you may want to look at different kinds of models to solve for it. So in, in, in this lesson, we will be touching only two. Number one, yung exponential, Malthusian. And number two, yung Verhulstian. Okay. Now, paano, kung yung ating exponential, medyo madali nating na-derive, uh, dp over dt equals um, p, right? kp, para sa exponential, na merong solution na p is equal to uh, c equals, I'm sorry, p is equal to c e raised to kt, yun yung exponential. But how about the Verhulstian? Paano nating masusolve? Itong di na to, dp over dt equals kp m minus p. Okay, let's try and derive it. Okay. Sige, let me bring out my handy dandy notebook. Yan. I hope you can see it on the screen. Let us try and derive yung ating um, Verhulstian model. Okay. Yung ating Verhulstian model, 
has an equation of dp over dt equals k p and then quantity m minus p. Tignan natin yung dt natin and what can we notice? If we expand this, magkakaroon tayo ng Bernoulli. You know? There are two ways to solve this. One is separable. And another is Bernoulli. Okay. Kasi pagka dinistribute mo itong Kp sa buong quantity na to, magkakaroon ka ng Kpm minus Kp squared. Okay. And then you can put it on the other side and magkakaroon ka ng Bernoulli. I'm gonna leave you with... In solving... Excuse me. I'm gonna leave you into... Uh, uh, looking at the solution using the Bernoulli. But uh, in this lesson, or in this um, lecture video, I'm gonna choose separable muna. So, para makita niyo yung basic. Okay, so let's try and solve this by means of separable. Let's look for the solution. No? Okay, so, kung meron tayong dp over dt, Our equation with kp m minus p, I can actually um, move p m minus p. Papunta rito sa side natin, sa left hand side. So magkakaroon ako ng dp all over p multiplied by m minus p. And I can move dt here. So magkakaroon ako ng k dt. Right. And of course, we integrate both sides. Integrating both sides. At magkakaroon tayo ng, well, dalawang integral. Itong sa babang ito, paano natin ito in, pwedeng i-integrate? Okay. Um, pag nag-UDU tayo, if we let u to be p, m minus p, magkakaroon ako ng du na, ano, m minus 2p. Which obviously is, wala dito sa numerator natin. No? So, di pwede ang UDU. Ano pang pwede? Trigonometric, meron ba kayong alam na trigonometric na um, A minus U squared? Pwede ba yun? Or U squared minus A? Parang hindi rin ata. But what we can notice here is that it is a factor, no? Uh, of p and m minus p, which if we were going to zoom out, you will also notice that this is a fraction, no? A fraction. So, pwede siguro to if we do partial fraction decomposition. Yan. So, let's try, no? Let's try decomposing this by means of partial fraction decomposition. So, kunin natin si fraction dito. Tapos, Kunin natin si 1 over p m minus p. Okay. Paano natin yan i-decompose? We can decompose that. If let's say we have a over p plus b all over m minus p. Ayan. Now, how do we solve this? Una, Kunin natin yung LCD, the least common denominator, at yun ay yung P, M minus P. Ayan. So, multiply ko to sa P, M minus P. Ating LCD. At magkakaroon ako ng resulting equation na 1 equals A M minus P Ayan. At B, P. Ayan. So, expand ko lang ng kaunti. Magkakaroon ako ng AM minus AP plus BP. Ayan. By systems of linear equation,
by systems of linear equation, we're actually gonna get um, para sa constant, no? Kung ating i-segregate yung constant, meron tayong 1. Tapos, lahat ng may constant here, recall na yung P natin is yung ating variable. So, M is treated as a constant here. <clears throat> okay. Kasi DP over DT eh. So, yung P yung ating dependent variable. So, kunin natin lahat ng walang P. So, obviously, from here, ang tanging walang P ay AM. Yun yung may constant lang. So, therefore, 1 equals AM. And A, which is yung numerator ng ating partial fraction, eto, no, is simply 1 over M. Ayan. Now, for the variable uh, part naman, or component, we have P, right? So, kunin natin lahat ng may P. Doon sa left side side ng equation, wala siyang... Uh, Asa, wala siyang ibang equivalent. So, 0. No? 0 equals um, in this case, yung meron tayong may P ay negative AP at saka BP. So, tanggalin na natin si P. Magkakaroon tayo ng negative A plus B. In other words, pag nilipat natin si B will be also equal to A which is equal to 1 over M. Ayun! So, meron tayong dalawa. No? Ito yung A natin at ito yung B natin. So, transferring, magkakaroon ngayon tayo ng partial fraction decomposition na PFD. Yung ating PFD na P, M minus P, 1 over that is also equivalent to ano yung ating A 1 over M all over um, P and then plus 1 over M then all over M minus P. So yung pala yung ka, ito pala yung kanyang decomposition. So kung ipa-plug natin back yan dun sa ating equation, plugging it back Magkakaroon tayo ng, di ba yung ating integral is um, dp all over p, m minus p, equals kdt, integral din. Magkakaroon ngayon tayo ng equivalent na ganito. Integral of 1 minus m, 1 over m, over p, plus... 1 over m, all over m minus p. Yan. So, integral na itong lahat. Of course, dp equals k dt. So, we can factor out 1 over m. No? Here, 1 over m. And then, distribute yung ating dp. So, magkakaroon tayo ng dp all over P plus DP all over M minus P equals integral of K DT. You can expand that further here. Magkakaroon tayo ng um we can multiply this, ano, actually, this um, 1 over m here. We can cross multiply, quote unquote. Here, papunta rito sa KDD at magkakaroon tayo ng... Magkakaroon tayo ng um, integral of dp. dp over p plus... Integral pala to. Oops. 
dp over p plus m minus p. Of course, integral pa din. And then, yung m natin mapupunta rito. So, magkakaroon tayo ng m k or km. The integral of dt. Ayan. So, mas mukhang magiging maliwanag na dahil dp over p as we know it, the integral of that is ln p plus negative ln m minus p. Saan galing yung negative ln minus p or ln m minus p? Kasi diba, if u is equal to m minus p, e di du equals 0 minus dp. Since meron tayong dp dito, kailangan natin mag-introduce ng negative. Right? At kung may negative, ito yung negative na yun. So, sensya na po. Sinort ko na. So, of course, km and then t and then, of course, plus c. Yan. So, combining, uh, since pares itong ln, we can combine this into 1. We have ln m minus p all over uh, or p over m minus p equals yan, km t plus c. Okay. If you raise this all to e, what will happen? Ln cancels out. Magkakaroon tayo ng p over mp. Rather, m minus p equals e raised to yon, kmt plus c. Expanding further, we're gonna get Um, this could be equal to e raised to kmt plus uh, uh, rather times e raised to c. And we know that e raised to c is also equal to c. So this could be further simplified as p over m minus p equals um, c e raised to kmt. Ayan. So meron na tayo na ating first workable solution. But, um, we have two arbitrary constants here, C and K, and we can apply yung ating initial value condition, no? IVP, and that is when when T is equal to zero, the population has an initial population of P naught. And in this case, you can solve for C. So, doing that, applying it here, magkakaroon tayo ng P naught. Hindi yung mani, no? P sub 0. <laughs> M minus. <laughs> Last ka yan, okay. P naught equals C. And then, of course, E raised to K. And then M. And then 0. But we know that e raised to 0 is equal, is equal to 1. So, therefore, c equals p naught all over m minus p naught. Ayan. Now that we have c, we can, we can substitute it back no, to our equation, to our first working equation. And we're going to get Substituting C, we're going to get P all over M minus P equals, ayan, yung P sub 0 or P naught, M minus P naught, E raised to K M T. Ayan. You can further simplify this to solve for P. Exp 
expressing in P, magkakaroon tayo ng, if you multiply this to both sides, P equals um, M minus P naught all over P naught E raised to K M T uh, M minus P naught E raised to K M T over M minus P naught P. So, anong ginawa ko dito? Itong denominator sa baba. Itong denominator sa baba, M minus P. I distributed it to the right-hand side. No? So, definitely, this one is multiplied to M. And this one multiplied to P. Hence, ito. Tsaka ito. So, if I substitute this, I'm sorry, if I transpose this back to the left-hand side of the equation para ma-factor out natin si P, I will get 1 plus P naught e raised to KMT all over M minus P naught. And then, of course, P. That's equal to M P naught e raised to KMT all over M minus P naught. So substituting, or rather, um, expanding this further, not tong baba, in denominator, M minus P divided by 1 times 1 will give me M minus P naught M minus P naught plus P naught E raised to M KMT KMT over M minus P naught equals yeah, itong ating natira dito, we have M P naught E raised to KMT oops hindi na kita KMT ayan, all over M minus P naught now M minus P naught here cancels out denominator dito kasi paras naman siya expression on, on both sides. Magkakaroon tayo ngayon ng of course P. This is multiplied by P. Lagay ko na lang dito sa pilit ha. And so expressing for P, magkakaroon tayo ng P equals yon M Minus P naught plus minus P naught e raised to KMT. Ito yung denominator natin. Yung numerator natin would be M P naught e raised to KMT. Ayan. Phew! Medyo mahaba, no? So, there you have it. Yung ating expression for... Yung solution natin for the Verhulst dyan is this. Yan. M P naught e raised to KMT over M minus P naught minus P naught uh, e raised to KMT. Oops, sorry. Okay. Ayan. So, ito yung expression in terms of variable separable. Now, pag sinold nyo yan in terms of Bernoulli, magkakaroon kayo ng quite a different expression. Pero if you're, if you plug in values for M, P naught, and T and M as well. Tap ko natin M. It you will also uh, it will also give you the same answer. So again, pag tinray niyan is solve or derive using Bernoulli, it will give you a different kind of expression from here. Iba dito pero I'm uh, sorry. Pero um, 
pagka nilagyan niyo ng values, parehas lang kayo makukuha ng sagot. So, again, this is now our solution for the Verhulstian model of the equation dp over dt equals km multiplied by quantity m. I'm sorry, kp multiplied by quantity m minus p. This is the solution. Okay? So, ayan. Now, in the coming problems, uh, in, or in the coming, yeah, sample problems that we'll be tackling about, most of this will be problem solving, of course. Most of this will be word problems. So you will be tasked to translate or to be able to understand kung anong sinasabi ng statement and to uh, have it or translate it into a mathematical model. Now, here's a proposed method in solving word problems. This is commonly called as the GRASP method. So, kumbaga, if you want to understand the problem, you must grasp the problem by using the GRASP method. At ano yung GRASP na yun? GRASP stands for Given, Required, Analysis, Solution, and then Paraphrase. By doing this kasi, the GRASP method, and clutters the problems and keeps your solution well elegant and organized, it will also allow you to easily identify your mistakes much easier. If, so if, you're, if you follow this um, kind of method, it will make um, you and your understanding of the question much easier in, in, and in an organized matter, manner. Ganun din on our end as your... Uh, markers or your uh, instructors when we grade or mark your solutions if it is um, formatted in that way it will be easier for us to see how uh, or the parts of the solution and will make it easier for us to mark or grade it so my proposal is that you, you use this grasp method in solving word problems okay so in the coming problems Ito yung gagamitin nating method para mas lalo nating makita kung paano siya sinosol. The GRASP method. Alright. So without further ado, let us proceed and look at some sample problems. So number one. The population of the Philippines has doubled in the last 50 years. The population of the Philippines in 1948 was 35 million. Now, the question is this. On what year will our population triple? On what year will our population triple? So, since this is a problem that involves about population, most probably this is about exponential. No? Exponential um, of the exponential type or exponential model na gagamitin natin. Bakit? Kasi... From the statements, the population of the Philippines has doubled in the last 50 years. That was the population of the Philippines in 1948 was 35 million. We can easily deduce that it is using exponential because wala naman siyang sinabing limiting factor or carrying capacity. Okay? So at least in our context, in, in, our, um, in this subject, pag population, dalawa lang pamimilian mo. Either logistic or exponential. In this case, since wala siyang carrying capacity, edi exponential siya. So let's try and solve this no, by um, identifying what is the given first. So given. Okay. Let us quantify. Yung pala yung word na ko. Let us quantify the problem. Kung baga, Himay-himayin. Himay-himayin natin ang problem. So, what are the given? Sabi dun sa first sentence, the population of the Philippines has doubled in the last 50 years. Medyo vague siya kung iisipin, ano? Kasi, kilang tong last 50 years? It, ito ba ay 2020 minus 50? Or it could be 20... It, could it be any 50 years of any year? Medyo vague yung first sentence, pero kung babasahin mo yung second sentence... Sabi niya roon, the, the population of the Philippines in 1948 was 35 million. Okay. So, if we'll choose 1948 as our reference. So, let T be equal to initially, no? Zero. Ito yung 1948. 
So, nung 1948 daw, ang population ng Pilipinas, P is equal to P not initial population. Binigyan naman yun ng value, that's 35 million. Tama? So, 1948. Yun. Now, the population of the Philippines has doubled in the last 50 years. So, assuming na yun yung reference natin, 1948. So, in the last 50 years, ibig sabihin, 1948 plus 50 is 1998. Yun. The population daw of the Philippines in the last 50 years has doubled. In other words, kung yung initial population natin is peanut, ito daw in 1998, rather, in, in after 50 years, in the last 50 years, ay nagdoble, edi 2 peanut. So 35 times 2, that's 70 million. Right? Now the question is this. Required. Question is, what year will our population triple? What year? Ano daw yung time required para makakuha ng population na ano yung age at ano yung year? No. The population will be tripled. So that's 3 P naught or 3 times Uh, 35, that's 105 million. Tama? Yun. Next. Let us now try and understand this by analyzing the problem. Analysis. Okay. So, exponential growth model siya. And we know that the relationship is dp over dt, that they are directly proportional. Let p be the population. So the relationship is the rate of change of the population is directly proportional to the current population. At kapag ka meron tayo yung, um, proportional relationship, you can introduce a proportionality constant, and this becomes dp over dt equals kp. Right? And so solving for p, No? Solving for our differential equation, we have dp over p equals k dt. And by integrating both sides, we're gonna get p equals c e raised to kt. Sinortet ko na kasi yung derivation naman ito na ipakita na natin dun sa unang previous, on the previous slides. So ito yung ating first working equation. Okay? First working equation. Now, we must find out what C is. This C. And we can find that out by using our IVP. So, yung ati initial value problem has conditions of, ano daw, when T is equal to 0, yun ngayong 1998, 1948 rather, the population daw, the initial population was, 35 million. Now, using this two information here, we can actually get C. So, let's, let's do that. Kung yung equation natin is P equals C e raised to KT, magkakaroon tayo ng P naught. Substituting, no? Magkakaroon tayo ng P naught equals C e raised to k times 0. And we know that e raised to 0 is 1. Therefore, c is equal to p naught or 35 million. Tama? So, substituting back, magkakaroon tayo ng p equals p naught e raised to kt. In this case, that would be 35 million e raised to kt. This is now our second working equation with identified c. Now, meron pa tayong isang natitirang arbitrary constant and that is k. And by using yung isang condition when 
t is equal to ano yung ating isang condition? Ito. When t is equal to 50, nag-double daw yung population. So, when t is equal to 50, the population equals 2 p naught. When t is equal to 50, the population doubled its initial population. And that is 3570m. We can now solve for k. Yan. So, using again our equation, yung second working equation natin, kasi nasolve na natin yung c on that, the equation is p equals p naught e raised to kt, right? So, substituting, meron tayong 2 p naught equals p naught e raised to k. And then when t is 50, yan. You can see here that p not cancels out. Kaya hindi ko na nilalagay yung 70 million, no? So, magkakaroon tayo ng 2 equals e raised to 50k. If we ln both sides, we'll eliminate e raised to 50k. At least yung e pala, sorry. Magkakaroon tayo ng ln2 equals 50 K. Therefore, K is equal to ln 2 all over 50. Okay. So, nakuha na natin si K. We can now complete our working equation. And that is, substituting K, or solution, rather. Ngayon, kompleto na yung ating equation. We can now proceed to the solution, and that is ln2 over 50. Ayun. The solution, and that is finding out when the population now triples 3p0, no? what will be or what year? will that be? What year? So now that we have completed our um, working equation, we have, di ba kanina, P um, equals P naught e raised to KT, where K is um, ln 2 over 50. We can now solve for P, and that is P equals, ano yung pinat natin? Ah, rather, um, t pa lang hinahanap. Kung kailan. So, yung p natin, since it is equal to uh, 3p not, kasi nga kung kailan siya magti-triple, so magkakaroon tayo ng substituting it. 3p not equals p not then e raised to ln 2 over 50 times t. Okay? So, p not cancels out here. And we're left with 3 equals e raised to ln 2 over 50 times t. Right? If we ln both sides, we have ln 3 equals ln 2 over 50 times t. Yeah. So solving for t. Magkakaroon tayo ng t equals um, 50 ln 3 all over ln 2. Ayan. So by using our calculator, by, by using our calculator, yon. We'll have 50 daw, 50 multiplied by ln 3 all over ln 2. Kakaroon tayo ng 79 t equals 79 
Oops, sorry. 79. Ang pinapractice ko ay 4 decimal places. So, 2, 4, 8, 3. 2, 4, 8, 3. Or 8, 1 pala, sorry. 2, 4, 8, 1 years. Okay. So, ito yung age or yung length nung, nung year. Pero ang tanong kasi is, on what year, meaning, anong calendar year? So, yung calendar year would be then 1948. CY calendar year would then be equal to 1948 plus 79 .2481. Years and this will give me 1948. Add natin sa calcul natin plus 1948. Ah, sorry, lah, Plus 1948. Yeah, the year would then be equal to 20 one. Or approximately equal to, syempre, 2027 na lang. Wala namang 2027.2 na taon, di ba? <laughs> Yan. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 20, 2027 will be the year kung kailan triple yung ating population. At least kung ang reference ay yung 1948. Yan. 2027. Okay. So to paraphrase. Twenty twenty seven will be the year the population triples. Yeah. Okay. So there you have it. That's how you use the grasp method in solving worded problems or word problems. Okay? So let's move on to our next problem. Okay. So we have a bacteria in a certain culture increases. Sorry, a bacteria in a certain culture increases at the rate proportional to the number of bacteria present. If the original number increases by 50% in 0.5 hours, how long will one expect three times the original number? How long will one expect three times the original number? Okay, let's try and solve this. So let's identify ano yung mga binigay. Given. So, ang sabi dito, if the original number, this is the second sentence, no? if the original number increases by 50% in 0 0.5 hours, okay, in 0 0.5 hours. So, initially, syempre wala pa siya, tapos nag-increase daw siya by, by 50% in, in half an hour. So, initially, 0 pa siya. Let B, sabihin na natin B, be the bacteria. B equals B na. Wala pa siya. Mabibinat yan. <laughs> Ang binigay, kapag, pagdating daw ng half an hour, 0 0.5. Pagdating ng 0 0.5, what? Nag-increase daw, if the original number increases by 50%. In other words, kung meron kang bacteria, meron ka ng initially, uh, B not, tapos nag-increase pa siya ng 50%, 0 0.5, B not, eh di meron kang B equals 1.5, B not. Tama? Yan. Ngayon, ano yung tinatanong? 
ang tinatanong ay oops you're asked to find out how long so time to definitely how long will one expect three times the original number so makatuwid pagka daw na triple yung original number b na kailan daw yan mangyayari okay let's analyze the problem So, sabi ng first sentence, bacteria in a certain culture increases at the rate proportional to the number of bacteria present. So, yung rate daw, let's call it B, dB over dt, is proportional to the current bacteria or the bacteria present. So, kagaya kanina, this is again another exponential model. So, alam na natin that pag ganyan, mag introduce tayo ng proportionality constant. Let's call it K, and then B. And then by putting B on the denominator of dB, or separating the variables, and then integrating, makakuha tayo ng ano, ln B, or simply short it ko na rin, B is equal to C e raised to KT. Right, so ito yung ating working, first working equation. Now, meron tayong dalawang arbitrary constants here, yung C at saka yung K, and we need to find them. Right? And how will we be able to find out what C is? We'll be able to find C if we apply the initial value condition. Right? Since initial value problem siya. And that is when T is equal to 0, ano daw? The bacteria present is equal to B not. We can solve for C. And we'll have, well, from B equals C e raised to KT. Magkakaroon tayo ng B not equals C, and then e raised to K, and then 0. And we know e raised to 0 is... 1. So, magkakaroon tayo ng C is equal to B not. Right? So, substituting ma-identify na natin si C and that is B equals B not E sorry E raised to K of course and then T. This is our second working equation. Pero meron pa rin tayong arbitrary constant, k, and we need to find that out, what k is. We'll be able to find that out when we apply another condition, and that is when t is equal to, ano daw yung second condition? When t is equal to 0 0.5, the bacteria daw is increased by 50%, so that's 1.5 B not. And here we'll be able to find K. So B is 1.5. From this equation, yung ating working equation nga, B not E raised to KT. We'll be able to substitute for B, and that is 1.5 B not equals B not e raised to k with t equals 0 0.5 or 1 half. Yeah. You can clearly see here that b not cancels out. And we have 1.5 equals e raised to 0 0.5 k. You can L in both sides. At magkakaroon tayo ng ln 1.5 equals one half k or k equals two ln one point five. Tama? Yan. So nakuha na natin si C, nakuha na natin si K. We have now a good working equation, and that is substituting.
magkakaroon tayo ng P, or rather B, equals B naught E raised to 2 ln 1.5, and then T. Yan, ito na yung ating working equation. So let's now proceed to solution. So solution. Okay, so for solution, ito yung ating working equation. Ang tanong kasi ay kung kailan daw, how long will one expect three times the original number? So in other words, when the population or the bacteria present triples, three, triples the original number, no? what time would that be? When will that happen? So solving our equation, B equals B naught E raised to KT. Magkakaroon tayo ng 3 B naught equals um, B naught then E raised to K which is 2 ln 2 and then ln 1.5 multiplied to T, kasi yun yung, yung hinahanap natin din pala. So, B not cancels out here. Kakaroon tayo ng 3 equals E raised to 2 ln 1.5 times T. Okay. If we ln both sides, kakaroon tayo ng ln 3 equals 2 ln 1.5 times t. Ayan. And then solving for t, we're gonna get 2 ln 1.5 as the denominator with ln 3 as the numerator. So of course, again, using our calculator, yeah, we can solve for that. And that is ln ln3 all over 2 ln 1.5 magkakaroon tayo ng 1.3.1.35476 so that's 1. 1.1.3548 Or approximately equal to 1.35. Yeah, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is our this is the length. No, gano katagal mag triple yung bacteria that will be one and a half hours. Okay, so to paraphrase, last part, which is a bit yung formalizing lang no yung ating sagot the bacteria will triple on 1.35 hours that's it okay oh, sorry parang pala yeah the bacteria will triple on 1.35 hours. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Let's move on to our next problem. Number three. So example number three. Radium decomposes approximately at a rate proportional to the amount present. If 100 grams now will be 98 grams 100 years later. So, ano nangyari? From 100 grams, nabawasan siya ng dalawa. Naging 98 daw siya. Makalipas ang sandang taon. Find, una, the half-life of radium. And second, the time it takes for two-thirds the amount. Ayan. So, this is a problem involving half-life. So, let's try and solve. So, again, the first step is to... 
identify the given. Let's quantify the problem. Sabi rito, if 100 grams now will be 98 grams 100 years later. 100 grams now. So let's take that as a reference. When t is equal to 0, yung sabi niyang now, the, ano daw ba? Radium. So let's call that R. Okay lang ba? Can we call that R? Radium will be, have a weight of 100 grams. R is equal to R naught equals 100 grams. Okay. Now, 100 or, uh, 100 years later, so when T is equal to 100, ano daw nangyari? Yung ating R, or yung amount of weight ng radium, reduces to 98 grams. Yan. Now, ano pinapahanap? Anong problema niya? Ang pinapahanap niya ay kung una, Ano daw? Half-life of radium. Half-life of radium. In other words, kailan daw? Oops. Kailan daw mangyayari kung R ay equal to one-half the original R na? Yun yung ibig sabihin ng half-life. Okay. Pangalawa, tanong ay, the time it takes for two-third amounts. When will it be? Kapag ka daw yung amount ng radium ay two-thirds the original amount. Ayan. Okay. So let's analyze this further. Sabi natin sa first sentence, radium decomposes approximately at a rate proportional to the amount present. So if R is radium and dr over dt is the rate of radium decomposing, then dr over dt is directly proportional daw, according to the problem, the present value of that radium. So kung merong proportional relationship, edi kagaya ng mga unang problems, you can introduce a proportionality constant k. And this is a differential equation that can be solved via variable separable. So we have k dt. And now integrating both sides, we're going to get um, ln r. Or shortcut na natin. Okay lang. r is equal to c e raised to k t. Okay. So that is our first working equation. Now, meron tayong dalawang arbitrary constants na kailangan nating hanapin. At ano yung dalawang yun? Correct. Yung C at yung K. Hanapin natin si C. At mahanap natin siya pag gumamit tayo ng initial value condition. Ayun. So gamitin natin yung initial value condition. This is an initial value problem, no? And let us use yung ating initial condition, which is... Initially daw, when t is equal to 0, in nga yung now, the amount of radium is 100 grams. Tama? And here, we can find out what c is. So, solving. Kung yung ating equation ay r equals c e raised to kt. Applying, no? So, meron tayong r naught. Substituting here equals C e raised to K and then 0. But we know e raised to 0 is 1. Ano ba mapansin natin? Lagi, no? That C is equal to R naught. The arbitrary constant is equal to the initial uh, value. So, substituting... Magkakaroon tayo ng R equals R naught e raised to kt. Yan. Medyo kompleto na. Kailangan na lang natin ay mahanap si k. Paano natin mahanap si k? 
gagamit ulit tayo ng another boundary condition. And that is when, ano daw, 100 years later, no? Or after. When t is equal to 100, what? Nabawasan na yung radium. 98 grams na lang siya. Mula dito, mahanap natin si K. Paano yun? Yung ating working equation is R equals R naught e raised to k t. But r is equal to 98 grams and r naught is equal to 100 grams. Right? e raised to k and then the time is 100 years. We can solve for k and that is 98 over 100 equals e raised to 100 K. If we ln both sides, kakaroon tayo ng ln 98 over 100 equals 100 K. Therefore, K is equal to um, ln 98 over 100 multiplied by 1 over 100. Yan. Now we can proceed to our solution. Kasi na natin si C, nahanap na natin si K. At ang unang tanong ay kailan daw yung half-life? No? The half-life of radium. Tinatanong kung kailan. No? Given that Radium is half life, half its original value. So, if our equation is R equals R naught e raised to kt, and we have R, which is one half R naught equals R naught e raised to k, nakuha na natin si k, at yun yung ln 98 over 100 over 100 times t. Right? Inahanap natin si t. R not cancels out here. And we're left with 1 half. equals e raised to ln 98 over 100 over 100 multiplied by t. Okay. If we ln both sides, kakaroon tayo ng expression for t and that is um, ln 0.5 equals ln 98 over 100 multiplied by t over 100. So therefore, t is equal to 100 ln 0 0.5 all over ln 98 over 100. Yeah. Okay. So using our calculator, we'll be able to solve for t, and that is 100, 100 ln 0.5, that's 1 half, over ln 98 divided by 100. t will be equal to, ayun, 3430.96185.96188 years. Tama, si taon yung tinatanong. So ito yung t ng half life. So t with r not over 2.
Okay? Pangalawa, pinapanap sa atin, kailan daw magiging two-thirds yung radium, amount ng radium. So, ito ating una. Yung second is, Kailan daw yung time kapag ka yung radium becomes two-thirds its original. So two-thirds are all. Yan. So, from our equation, we have R equals R not e raised to KT. Substituting back, meron tayong... Um, R, which is equivalent to two thirds R naught equals R naught e raised to yung k natin na kuwan natin to be ln ninety eight over one hundred, di ba? Ln ninety eight over one hundred over one hundred times t. Tama. So R naught cancels out here. And we're left with two thirds equals e raised to ln ninety eight over one hundred over one hundred times t. So if we ln both sides, ma kuha tayo ng ln two thirds. equals ln ninety eight over one hundred over one hundred times t. So therefore t two thirds R O is equivalent to one hundred ln two thirds all over ln ninety eight over 100. Okay. Ah, may pa. Sorry. Parang yung calcu. Yan. Move lang natin kaunti. Yan. Para may space. Yan. So, using our calculator, kanina nakiinan natin siya. Papalitan lang natin yung 0.5. Gawin natin two-thirds. And boom! Meron tayong 2006.98 which is approximately equal to 2006 or 2007 na lang kasi 98 naman siya years ayan so there you have it ladies and gentlemen solution finding out what year will it reach um, two thirds its value ayan 2007 Makikita nyo, no? yung difference, 3, 4, 30, tsaka 2007. Sa half-life, mas matagal. Pero 2 thirds is value um, is 2007 years ang abot. Okay. So, of course, paraphrasing. Just to formalize. Yeah. Paraphrase. It will take three, four, thirty 
approximately 3 for 31. Pwede natin i-0.96. 3 for 31 years to reach half-life. And 2007 years to reach two third of RO. Ayan. Or R naught. Ayun. So there you have it. 3 for 31 or 2007. Let's take a look at another problem. So far, okay naman. Hope nakakasunod. You can pause back and return if you feel na you missed out something. Here's a very interesting question you know, that I have for you. Na may a bit scientific and history um, attached to it. So the problem is, in 1988, the Vatican granted a scientific analysis of the Shroud of Turin, believed to be the burial of Jesus of Nazareth. As of 1988, no, using that year as a reference, determine the approximate age. Determine the approximate age of the shroud. Yung shroud, yun yung parang burial cloth. Yung itinatali. Di ba, sa Egypt, mayroong mummification. Yung mummies, di ba, parang kinukuvera ng toilet paper. <laughs> well, ganun din yung um, tradition, Jewish tradition, na binabalat nila ng uh, cloth yung kanilang dead. Tawag na shroud. Okay? So, Yun nga, in 1988, they found out a shroud. Or rather, hindi naman 1988. Somewhere, or, uh, kung kailan, hindi ko na-research din kung kailan nahanap yung shroud or what was presented. But there was, uh, yun nga, a shroud na na-discover, claimed to be of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, in 1988, merong group of scientists that were allowed to study uh, to carbon date yung shroud na yun. And yun nga, we will take the role of those scientists and try to carbon date kung kailan uh, yung shroud na yun ay maaring nagsimula and determine, ano, answer the question, could it really be Jesus' shroud? Yan. Medyo intriguing, no? So yeah. So, as of 1988, determine the approximate age of the shroud if the original amount of C14 that remained, so, na measured nila yun, is 92%. May natitirang 92% na C14. Now, based on our computation, let us try and comment if, based on our, our calculation, if it really is Jesus' shroud. Okay, let's do that. Exciting, di ba? So, binigyan lang tayo ng medyo limited na information. At yun ay ang i-quantify natin. So, given, sabi, as of 1988, the amount of C14 remaining is 92%. Okay? So, initially, Hindi natin alam kung ano yung amount talaga, no? So, let's call it A naught. So, when T is equal to 0, the amount of radium, or rather C14, is A naught. Okay. Now, we'll pull here an information that we have discussed already earlier in terms of C14. At yun ay yung tinatawag na half-life. Okay? Sabi natin kanina, ang half-life daw ng C14 ay 5,730 years. Okay? And that is when A is equal to 1 half A naught. Okay? Yun yung half-life niya. So, hindi siya minention dyan kasi in na niya na alam na natin yung C14. So, okay, kayo mag-alala, hindi naman tayo lalagpas sa C14 at hindi kailangan malaman yung iba. Either state na siya kung ano yung half-life or another uh, boundary condition para masolve natin yung problem. Now, ang tinatanong ay kung 
Ang tinatanong ay kung kailan daw or ano yung age gano na katagal katanda yung shroud na yon kapag ka ang measurement nila noong noon ay 92% na lang yung natitira no remaining of C14 okay so let's analyze Okay. So carbon dating uh the relationship here is that the amount the rate of amount with respect to time is directly proportional to the current amount. So since meron siya lang direct proportionality relationship, we can introduce a proportionality constant k. And you know this already that this is separable, dA over dt, or um, dA over A. Equals K dt. And so integrating will produce A equals C e raised to K d. So this is our first working equation. Ngunit meron pa siyang dalawang arbitrary constants. Yun ay C at saka si K. So, we can solve for that by using our initial value condition. So, IVP si Ivana. <laughs> can you use Ivana? So, when T is equal to sorry. When T is equal to zero, yung amount daw ng C14 is a naught. Okay. So, from our working equation, A equals C e raised to KT, magkakaroon tayo ng a naught equals C e raised to K and then 0. And we know e raised to 0 is 1. Therefore, C is equal to a naught. So, substituting Kakaroon tayo ngayon ng equation na A equals C e raised to, or rather, A naught e raised to K T. For now that, with solving K, applying another condition, no? yung half-life, yun, para masolve natin si K. When T is equal to 5730, 5730 years, Yun nga daw yung half-life niya, one-half the original amount of C14. Solving, meron tayong A equals A naught e raised to KT. Kakaroon tayo ng one-half A naught equals A naught e raised to K with the year 5730. Yun. A naught cancels out. And we're left with one half. E raised to 5, 7, 30, and then K. If we ln both sides, magkakaroon tayo ng ln 0 0.5 equals 5, 7, 30, K. Therefore, K equals ln 0.5 all over 5730. Okay. Ngayon na natin si C, nakuha na natin si K, pwede na natin isolve yung ating differential equation or yung ating problem. And that is, we want to know kung ano yung age ng shroud. Pinapahanap sa atin ay age kapag ka 92% na lang yung natitira. In other words, when A is equal to 0 0.92. C14. 
0.92a naught. So, from our working equation, we have a a naught a raised to kt. Substituting the values, meron tayong 0.92a naught equals a naught a raised to k, which is ln 0 0.5 all over 5730 and then p which is yung pinapahanap tama yeah so a not cancels out here and we have 0 0.92 equals e raised to ln 0 0.5 over 5730 then t if we ln both sides kakaroon tayo ng ln 0 0.92 equals ln 0 0.5 over 5730 t therefore t is equal to 5730 multiplied by ln 0 0.92 all over ln 0 0.5. This will give us our calculator. Yan. So we have 5730. 5730 multiplied by ln 0 0.92 all over ln 0 0.5. We have 689 689.28 Six zero years. Six hundred eighty-nine years old palang yung ating yung shroud, yung age ng shroud. So to answer paraphrase. Based on our computation, yung age ng shroud ay 689 years pa lang, and that is from 1988 as our reference. In other words, uh, from 1988, 1988 minus 689, palagay na nating 690 years yan. No? Maaring yung ating 1988. So, Calculate natin ano. 1988 minus 690. Ang approximate age or approximate date of origin ng shroud ay about 1298. Of course, this is AD, Anyo Domini, or after death. So in conclusion, what can we say about this? Oops. What can we say about this? Kung yung origin is 1298 pa lang, after death na to ni Christ, eh he was born mga BC or he died mga, well, AD 0 or AD 1 or AD, yeah? After death. Most probably, this is not the Shroud of Jesus, we can say. So what can we say? Based on our computation, could it really be Jesus' Shroud? Uh, based on our computation, This could not be the shroud of Jesus of Nazareth. Kasi 
kasi dapat at least near less than 1290. Ang layo pa eh, 1290 years pa eh, after ng death ni Christ. No? But, of course, we're not experts here. We're not saying that this is conclusive. What we're saying is just based from the data given us and our computation, we are arriving to a conclusion based on our data that it might not be, no? Or it could not be the shroud of Jesus kasi ang probable year of origin niya ay 1298, no? It's amazing how one person could divide time, no? Christ. Before Christ and then after death. It's amazing. He could really be a very important person that you should seek a relationship to. Or with. Yeah. So, with 689 years, it probably is not the shroud of Jesus. Okay. So, ano ba yung itsura ng shroud? No? Yung shroud, ito yung itsura niya. Yan. So, ito yung buong length ng shroud na natagpuan. Di umano na shroud ni Jesus. Ito yung full length niya. So, medyo mahaba siya. Kinat ko siya mula dito sa ta. Mula dito sa portion na to. Hanggang sa baba. Ito yun. no Part of the shroud bearing the image of a man. And then... If you magnify this part, yung face part, ito yung magiging itsura niya. Medyo malabo, pero pag ginamita mo ng image processing, no? kinuha mo yung negative niya, may lalabas na image. At ito yung image niya. Yan. Kaya perhaps during that time, siguro marami ang convinced na this was the shroud or the shroud of Jesus kasi they have this perceived image of him to, to have, well, a beard, or uh, long hair, etc., etc. But based on our computation, nga, um, it it kind of uh, it is kind of hard to say that it is the shroud of Jesus. Yeah, so yun yung itsura. So yun, di ba? We can use DE to carbon date. Let's move on to our next problem. Number five. The rate of change of a certain substance is proportional to the amount of substance is 10 grams at the start and 5 grams at the end of 2 minutes. Find the amount of substance remaining at the end of 6 minutes. So yeah, let's try and solve this out. First, let us quantify ano yung given. So, ang sabi dito, meron tayong 10 grams initially. No? The rate of change of a certain substance is proportional to the amount of substance is 10 grams at the start. So 10 grams at the start. So when t is equal to 0, the amount of substance, so let's call it uh, A na lang. No? A is A not. Initially though, at the start, it is 10 grams. Okay. And 5 grams at the end of 2 minutes. When t is equal to 2 minutes, the amount daw is 5 grams. So, nang lahate after 2 minutes. Ang tinatanong, ang tanong, no, 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 ay kung ano yung matitira. Ano yung matitira kapag ka after 6 minutes na. So, what will be the amount? Yan. Remaining at the end of 6 minutes. Okay. So, let's analyze. So, we have here the same. Um, sabi dun sa first sentence, the rate of change of a certain substance is proportional to the amount of the substance. So, if the rate of change of a substance A is directly proportional to the amount of the substance A, then meron silang proportionality relationship, right? At pag meron silang proportionality relationship, we can introduce a proportionality constant K. And same as the previous problems, this can be solved by means of 
differential equations, integrating both sides, kakaroon tayo ng A equals C e raised to K T. Mapansin natin no, from the previous problems na halos laging ito yung equation natin. Kahit pagpalit-palitin mo yung mga variables, doon pa rin siya nag -e end up. Now, mula dito sa expression na ito, mapapansin natin, we have two arbitrary constants. We have C and we have K and we have to find that out. We can find out C, yung arbitrary constant natin, by using si Ivana. <laughs> yung IVP natin. Yan. Condition, and that is when t is equal to 0, the amount daw, or the initial amount at the start, is 10 grams. Okay. So using that equation, our first working equation, we have A equals C e raised to kt. Substituting A naught. Nagay muna natin siya dyan without uh, writing the values. Again, over and over again, we will notice that the arbitrary constant C is equivalent to the initial amount. Therefore, substituting we have A equals A naught things na substitute natin E raised to K T. Ayan, we have now our second working equation. Applying again yung ating third condition or rather yung second condition which is when T is equal to 2 minutes daw. The amount of the substance became 5 grams. Monte. No? We can solve for the K here. I think proportionality constant. That is from the equation A equals A not E raised to KT. We have A to be 5 grams. And A not initially 10 grams. E raised to K after 2 minutes. So you have here 5 over 10 is 1 half. So 1 half equals E raised to 2 K. If we ln both sides, kakaroon tayo ng ln 0 0.5 equals 2 K. Therefore, K is ln 0.5 over 2. Yeah. Now na nakuha na natin si K, we can now proceed to our solution kasi kompleto na yung mga sangkap natin para sa ating solution. And that is when T is equal to 6 minutes Ang pinapahanap ay yung amount. So substituting from our working equation of A equals A naught E raised to KT. Substituting the values, meron tayong A, which is yung hinahanap natin, equals A naught, yung initial value, 10 grams. E raised to K, which is 0 0.5 ln 0 0.5. And then T, which is at 6 minutes. Yeah. Therefore, A is equal to, let's use our calculator. Yeah. So we have 10 E. Sorry. 10 E raised to 0 0.5. 0.5 ln 0.5 times 6 equals 5 over 4.
5 over 4 or 1.25 1.25 Anong unit? Grams, correct Ayan, so there you have it Our solution 1.25 grams daw siya after 6 minutes So to paraphrase The amount of substance after six minutes amount of substance remaining the amount of substance remaining is one point twenty five grams okay oops sorry after six minutes the amount of substance remaining is 1.25 grams okay let's proceed to working out our next problem ayan so ito naman about uh money about money oops so the problem is um, Jose M invests 20,000 in a pyramid scheme. Mm, nako. Ingat, ingat, which pays 5% interest annually. Compounded continuously. Keyword, no? Compounded continuously. So what will be the amount of, in, of the investment after three years? And what is the time or what time is required for the investment to double in value? Presuming no withdrawals and no additional deposits. Okay, so let's try and solve this. Let us quantify the problem by asking ourselves, what is the given or what are the given values? Sabi rito, nag-invest daw si Jose ng 20,000 sa isang pyramid scheme kasi gusto niyang itry. Sabi kasi sa kanya, gagawin niya daw 10K yung 5K mo. Hmm. Okay. So, nagbigay ng 20,000 si Jose. That's the initial money that he gave. So, initially, when T is equal to 0, let's say um, the amount S the initial amount na nilabas na ay 20,000 pesos. Okay. Ngayon, ang sabi niya rito, na nagbabayad daw ng 5% interest annually. Okay. Meron siyang interest rate na 5%. Ayun. Ngayon, ang tanong, lagyan natin sa baba. May interest rate na 5%. Ang tanong niya, kailan daw? Or ano daw yung magiging value ng pera niya after 3 years? When t is equal to 3, what will be the amount of his money? Okay. Kung yun yung given eh. So let's proceed with by analyzing the problem. Magkakaroon tayo ng DS over DT directly proportional to the amount no, of money that was invested. So this will become DS over DT equals KS or in this case, in K natin let's call R no, as the rate of interest. So DS over S equals RDT. Integrating both sides will give us S equals C e raised to RT. This is our first working equation. No? 
Now, by applying yung ating initial value condition, yung ating Ivana, and that is when t is equal to 0, no? when t is equal to 0, the amount initially is 20,000. 20k, lagay ko na lang, no? And C is, C can be solved. So solving, meron tayong S, C raised to RT. Um, substituting yung value, we have S not equals C raised to RT, where T is equal to 0. And we know that E raised to 0 is 1. So therefore, C equals S not. So substituting, we'll have S equals S not E raised to R. Ayan. This is our second working equation. Meron pa tayong R na kailangan hanapin. Kailangan ba siyang hanapin? In this case, hindi na natin siya kailangan hanapin kasi binigay na siya. R is equal to 5% daw. So we can go straight to solving our solution or to, to solving the problem. And that is sabi niya um, on the third year, when t is equal to 3, nagbabaya daw ng interest rate na 5% no, sa kabuuan. Annually, no? Yung investment. So, using this, um, we can find for S, and that is S equals S not e raised to RT will become S equals yung initial nating investment or ni investment ni Jose, which is 20,000 pesos. Ang labas siya ng 20 mil or 20k. And then e raised to yung rate annually is 5%. No? And then multiplied by 3. So S equals how much? Labas natin yung, oops, sorry. Labas natin yung calcul natin. So, meron tayong 20,000 daw. E raised to 5% times 3. So, 23,000. Yung pera niya ay 23,000. 236.684 pesos. So imagine ano, after 3 years, kumita lang siya ng 3,000 mula dun sa kanyang initial investment na 20,000. Ang liit lang yan. 1,000 per year. No? Kaya if I were you, mag invest na lang ako dun sa mga sure investments. Um, one good investment is pag-ibig. Seryoso? Pag-ibig MP2. Okay. Uh, it is a government guaranteed fund. So, yan ay, uh, I think, 7%, 6%. Kesa dito na 5%, tapos magkano lang makukuha mo? 3,000 at 20k na niligay mo. Baba yan. Pero syempre sa banko, mababa din. Kasi 0, 0.0 something yung interest rate nun. So to paraphrase, um, uh, what time is required for the investment to double in value? Presuming no... Ah, di pa pala tapos. Ah, di, tama. Uh, 23,000. Di pa pala tapos. Okay, di pa pala tapos. Meron parang second question. Ang tanong ay, when, what time is required for the investment to double in value? So, ito yung una. Sorry about that. Yung second question is, kailan daw do double? Tignan nga natin. When 
what will be the time na yung S natin ay do doble what time is required for the investment to double in value? So, 2S not. Assuming no withdrawals and no additional deposits. So, ibig sabihin, nilagay mo lang talaga siya doon. No? Hindi mo siya ginalaw. Kailan siya magdodoble? Sige, solve natin. So, we have S equals S not e raised to RT. So, if S is... I'm sorry. Kailan daw to doble? What time is required? Oh, ang hinahanap natin ay T. So, if S is 2, S not. S not. E raised to R, which is 5%. And then T, yung hinahanap natin. Ano? So, S not doubles or cancels out. And we have here um, 2 equals E raised to 5%. Times t. Okay. If we L in both sides, kakaroon tayo ng ln2 equals 5% times t. So therefore, t is equal to 5% times ln2. This will give us, labas natin ang calculator natin, um, 5% multiplied by ln2 Ah, wait lang. Troubleshoot, troubleshoot. Ayun, mali. Kasi dapat, over 5%. Uh, over 5%, hindi multiplied. LN2 over 5%. Kaya mali nga naman siya. LN2. Yan. So LN2 over 5% will give us. Mali ito. Tapat ay LN2 divided by. Yan, 5%. 5%. Oops. This will be equal to 13.8629. years. Tagal! No? Mukhang hindi magandang investment yan. Para lang maging 40,000 siya. No? You will have to put it 14 years dun sa pyramid scheme. So ingat sa mga investment. Make sure na sure yan. Okay. So to paraphrase. Paraphrase, um, ang tanong ay, what will be the amount after 3 years? After 3 years, after 3 years, um, the amount will be 23,000. The investment will be 23,236.68 The amount will double after 13 years. That's it. 13.86 years. Alright. Let's proceed to our next problem.
Okay, so same problem in the sense na pareha silang pera. Dito naman, si Wally ay naglagay ng 5,000. <coughs> Excuse me. Savings account niya that accumulates interest compounded continuously. Again, the keyword continuously. Assuming no additional deposits or withdrawals, how much will be in the account after 7 years if the interest rate is constant at 8.5? Taas for the first 4 years and a constant 9.25 for the last 3 years. Okay. So, binigyan tayo ng 5,000 daw. Initially, yun yung pera niya sa savings account. So, when t is equal to 0, initially, the amount of money, let's call it S again, is 5,000 pesos. Okay. Now, ang sabi niya, when the first, the first, uh, Four years of the seven years, I made on 8.5 rate, no? So when, let me be that T sub 4. The rate is 8.5%. The rate is actually 8 .5%, no? And on the last three years, no? The rate naman daw was 9.25%. Ngayon, ang tinatanong, pinapanap sa atin ay kung ano yung amount, what will be, I'm oh, sorry, uh, the question is, um, how much will be the account after 7 years if the interest rate is constant uh, 8.5 for the first four and 9.25 for the last three years. In other words, when T4 plus T3, no, or T, T4 plus 3, what will be the amount? Yan. So, kasi ang mangyayari dyan, ang sabi niya kasi, yung first four years daw, 8.5, tapos yung last three years, iba na yung rate. So, yung sabihin, um, kailangan natin i-apply yung uh, unang deposit ng 8.5 rate for the first 4 years. And then kung magkano na yung na-accumulate on that time, yung makukuha nating amount doon, saka natin gagamitin for the next or for the last 3 years na 9.25 yung rate. Gets? So, sige. Analyze natin. Analysis. So, ibig sabihin parang uh, ano ba natin? Two components sa buong seven years kasi yung first part ay four years, 8.5. Tapos yung second part is 9.25 for the last three years. Sige. So, same same concept. Sabi naman niya rito, um, it accumulates interest compounded continuously. So, directly proportional siya to the amount present. So, ayun, kapag ka meron tayong ganyang relationship, we can um, introduce a proportionality constant. And we have a differential equation, so this can be solved variable separable. So, k dt, integrating both sides, gives us s equals c e raised to r t. Or pala, hindi kay. Okay. So, this is our first working equation. Now, uh, applying yung ating initial value condition. And that is when t is equal to 0, the amount initially is 5,000. Right? And we can solve for c. So from the equation s is equal to c e raised to rt, we have substituting s naught equals c e raised to r multiplied by 0. And we know that this is 
simply equal to 1? No. Therefore, C is equal to S naught. So, substituting we have S equals S naught e raised to R T. This is our second working equation. Now, ito na yung application part. So, solution. Apply na natin yan. Yung na-derive natin na equation. Ang tanong niya ay, on the end of the seventh year, what will be the account? How much will be in the account? So, apply muna natin yung first three years. No? When t is equal to 4, When t is equal to 4, no, the rate daw is 8.5%. Right? So we can compute for the amount on the first four years. And that is our governing equation s equals to s naught e raised to rt will give us. Um, S raised to S of sub 4, meaning when T is equal to 4, first 4 years. The initial amount of deposit, 5,000, diba? E raised to 8.5% multiplied by first 4 years. So, yung first 4 years, magkaka-accumulate ka at 8.5% ng... Move natin sa glip. Pas natin ng calcul natin. Okay. So, 5,000 multiplied by E. Oops. 5K multiplied by 8.5% um, times 4 years. Ito yung magiging pera niya. 7,024. Kumita siya ng 2,500. No? 7,024.7379 or 80. Now, when T is equal to 3, ito yung last remaining 3 years. So, makikerry out yung value nitong 7,000. Ano? Ito yung gagamitin natin S. When T is equal to 3, the new rate is 9.25%. No? The S is equal to yung S4. Now, we're asking for S7 on the seventh year. So, solving this from the equation S equals S naught e raised to RT, we're gonna have S, I'm sorry, S naught, S sub zero pala. Yan. So, S equals yung S4 natin, yung value na nakuha na natin ng first four years. Ito na kasi yung nasa bangko mo, 7,024. 0.7380 e raised to makikerry out lang siya, di ba? 9.25% multiplied by the last remaining 3 years. So, by the end of the 7th year, S7, no? How much will be your money? Your money will become, multiply na rin yan, 7,000. So, 7,000 multiplied by E raised to 9.25% multiplied by 3. Yan. So, ang magiging pera mo na ay 9,271.4326.
Ayan. So. Maganda, maganda. Lumaki yung pera mo. From 5,000 at the end of 7 years, 9,271. Ito lang pala yung sagot, tanong actually. At the end of second, third, uh, seventh year. So to paraphrase, at the end of seventh year, The accumulated amount is nine thousand two hundred seventy one point forty three. Okay. Oops. Sorry. I don't know that. At the end of the seventh year. The accumulated account is 9,271.43. That's it. Okay. All right. So let's proceed to our next problem. Yeah. So a population of insects in a region will grow at a rate that is proportional to their current population. In the absence of any outside factors, the population will triple in two weeks' time. On any given day, there is a net migration into the area of 15 insects and 16 are eaten by the local bird population and 7 die of natural causes. If there are initially 100 insects in the area, will the population survive? If not, when do they die out? Okay, so let's solve this problem. Medyo tricky tong problem to, ano, from Dawkins. <clears throat> so let's quantify the problem by analyzing ano yung mga binigay sa atin, what are they given. Alright. So we can identify here that the population daw of uh, the insects initially were 100. So when t is equal to 0, the insects, let P be the population, initially, P naught is 100. Okay. Tapos, ano pang sabi niya? Sabi niya, um, in two weeks' time, in the absence of any outside factors, the population will triple in two weeks' time. Okay. On any given day, there is a net migration into the area of 15 insects. And 16 are eaten by the local bird population. 7 die out of natural causes. So, kumbaga, if we're going to draw out yung area, no? let's say this is yung pond or uh, box kung nasaan yung mga insects. So, yung pumapasok doon sa pond on a daily basis is 15. Tapos, yung kinakain ng birds, ang katawa kasi, 16. Okay. And then, yung iba naman, namamatay. Out of natural causes, pito. And sabi niya, daily daw yun. On any given day, the activity is 15 insects come in, 16 insects are eaten, and then 7 die out of natural causes. Makong tigilid itong population na ito, or itong insects na ito, no? Uh, yung activity niya at least doon sa pond. So, kung initially may mga insects na around mga 100, yan. It seems na mas yung rate ng death o nung pagkawala ay mas mataas kesa doon sa birth, no? Pero kung mawawansin natin, no, ang sabi dito, on any given day. So, ibig sabihin, itong activity na to of 15 coming inside the area and then uh, meron daw 16 that die or are eaten and then 7 die. Ang sabi niya rito, daily siya, no? So, from that time frame, Doon natin ibasa yung ating um, time no uh, in this problem. So instead of letting t be equal to 2 as per 2 weeks, sabi dun sa second sen sentence na in the absence of any outside factors, the population will triple in 2 weeks. 
instead of two, let's make it daily. So two weeks times seven days is 14. Okay. Now when t is equal to 14, and the yung population, the population is it doubles. Tama? In the absence of any outside factor, the population will triple. Sorry, triple pala. So three p not its original number or its initial number, and that becomes 300. Tama? Yan. Now, what is being asked of us? We are asked to find out what? Kung makakasurvive daw, you know, if there are initially 100 insects in the area, will the population survive? Ibig sabihin, kung may matitira pa dun sa loob. So, when P, the population, is greater than 0, will P be greater than 0? Because if it is, um, edi, hindi siya mamamatay. Or, uh, survive siya. Pero, when, um, and what will be the time, no? When, uh, that becomes into fruition. I mean, if, if they don't survive, kailan sila mamamatay? Wait, when do they die? Ayan. So, let's try and, uh, form an equation, no? And analyze further yung situation. So, from here, since ang sabi niya, the population of the insects will grow in a region, will grow at a rate that is proportional to their current population. If the rate of change of the population is dp over dt, sabi niya doon, proportional daw siya to what? The current population p. So, this is a differential equation because if we introduce a constant of proportionality here, k, we can separate p and dp on the left-hand side and k and dt on the right-hand side and integrate both to form yung ating um, model, exponential model, which is p equals c e raised to k t. Correct? Now, um, okay sana to kung ang given condition ay walang kinalaman sa death kung purely birth lamang siya. Pero ang nangyari kasi dito, merong siyang consider na death, which is yun ngang 7, no? Pitong namamatay, at 16 na namamatay. So in this case, isasama natin sa consideration yun. So what will happen? If the relationship is they are directly proportional, no, dp over dt is directly proportional with the current population, we can also say that the, the uh, relationship between the rate of change is equal to k or equal to um, birth minus death. Ito yung tinatawag na net population. Dun sa birth, since directly proportional siya dun sa current population, dun mapupunta yung ating constant of proportionality dun sa KP. No? Tapos, ang sabi niya, dun sa birth, yung mga pumupunta dito sa fund, no? ito yun yung KP, plus 15. So, ito yung uh, uh, birth or yung live. No? And then yung namamatay is... 16, kinakain daw ng ibon. Tapos, pito na namamatay out of natural causes. Ito yung death. So, our model will uh, become dp over dt equals kp minus 8. So, this will become our uh, working model for our DE to uh, understand kung makaka-survive sila o hindi. But, medyo tricky ito, no? Kasi meron siyang statement dito na nagsasabi na, sabi niya, in, in the absence of any outside factors, ibig sabihin, pagka wala daw nakaka-apekto sa kanya na iba, like death and other um, circumstances, only birth, no? We must take note that yung statement niya dito sinasabi na 
um, in the absence of outside in the absence of outside factors tong statement na to is actually equivalent to saying na we should only consider yung birth rate In other words, dp over dt directly proportional to p will give us dp over dt um, equal to kp. And teka, ingat lang natin to ano para meron tayong Yeah. So dp over dt uh, is directly proportional to p and dp over dt is equal to kp. We know that uh, upon integrating this, <clears throat> um, sorry, we form a differential equation and by separating the variables, we form yung nakuha na nga natin kanina, which is p equals um, c e raised to k t, no? That is, if you consider yung sinasabi niya nitong statement na in the absence of outside factors. In other words, ang, yung sinasabi niya dyan, in terms of the rate um, in solving for k, no? We will only consider yung birth rate muna. So, papaano yun? So, ganito yung mangyayari. So, uh, applying yung ating um, initial value condition dito sa equation. And that is when t is equal to 0. When t is equal to 0, p is equal to p naught, which is equivalent to um, 300, or rather 100. We can actually solve for c, right? And we know this already, that kung yung ating uh, equation in solving for k is p is equal to c e raised to kt, we will get um, p, which is p naught, equals c e raised to kt, or k raised to 0. And we know that e raised to 0 is simply just 1. Therefore, c is equal to p naught. Substituting, makakakuha tayo ng p equals p naught e raised to kt as our second working equation. Now, in solving for k, we use the condition when t is equal to 14. The population daw, triples, no? The initial population, p naught. And in this way, we can solve for k. So applying that to our um, working equation, which is p equals p naught e raised to kt, magkakaroon tayo ng 3p naught equals p naught e raised to yan, k and then 14, kasi 2 weeks. Tama. We can solve for k. p cancels out here. So we're left with 3 equals e raised to 14k. Right? If we add on both sides, we'll have ln3 equals 14k. Thus, k is ln3 all over 14. Now that we have k, we can now move on to our, to solve our equation, no? And find out if the 
insects will survive or not. At paano yun? Uhugutin natin siya mula doon sa ating nakuang equation kanina. Sabi natin, di ba, dp over dt equals kp minus 8. Tama? Si k nakuha na natin and that is ln3 LN over 14. So, magkakaroon tayo ng dp over dt. Lipat ko siya rito, ano? Plus negative ln uh, rather negative ln ln3 oops all over 14 equals 8 or negative 8 okay so how do we solve this no how do we solve this equation? Recall that this has the form that dy over dx plus p of x y equals q of x. Right? Recall na itong form na to, or this differential equation here, has a linear differential equation form. And so, um, this is the standard form. The standard form is um, dp over dt. <clears throat> and from here, dp over dt plus negative ln3 over 14. And then p. Yung pala, nakalimutan yung p. Okay. okay move ko na lang to dito. We will notice na, yun nga, um, it has a linear differential equation form. So we can identify P of T, or P of, yeah, in this case, T. P of T is equal to negative ln 3 over 14. And that Q of T is negative 8. So it's standard form, no? Now, in solving DE, or uh, na may linear equation form, kailangan natin ng integrating factor. Nalala pa? Yung integrating factor natin can be solved. That is mu of t equals e raised to the integral of p of t dt. Ayan. So we have e raised to, ano yung PFT natin? Negative ln 3 over 14 dt. Yeah. So this becomes mu of t equals e raised to negative ln 3 over 14 t. Okay. Yon. So, ito yung ating integrating factor. Next, we move on and we look for the general solution. Ibang general solution natin is um, P mu of T equals integral of mu of T Q of T dt. So, with that, um, substituting, meron tayong P, and then meron tayong E raised the negative ln 3 over 14. T equals the integral of the same, negative ln 3 over 14. T. Q of T is negative 8. DT, of course, plus C. So, yeah. So, integrating this one will give us um, negative 8 multiplied by <clears throat> negative 14 over ln3 
multiplied by e raised to negative ln 3 over 14 t plus c. Yeah. So this now becomes p equals dividing e raised to negative ln 3 over 14 t multiplied to t will give us um, 8 times 14 is actually 8 times 14 all over ln3 <clears throat> plus c e raised to yeah, positive ln3 over 14 t. Yeah, so this is now our solution. So applying yung ating values, applying yung ating values, the question is, will they survive? Will they survive? So let's take a look, no? Uh, when t is equal to 0, when t is equal to, or rather p, is equal to 0, When p is equal to 0, meaning na, na yung population ng insects no, ay naubos na. What will be that time? Or meron ba nun? Or may extinct ba sila? Okay. So, applying this will give us um, 0 equals 8 times 14 all over ln3 plus ano yung c natin? Ako ba natin si c? Our c is equivalent to p not and p not is 100 so putting that back in This will be equal to sige, dito, 100 e raised to ln 3 over 14. Then t. Ayan. Solving for t, no? By shift solve, <laughs> tuturong ko kayo ng isang pinagbabawal na technique na for sure alam nyo na to sa calculator ninyo paano yun? so pag tinatamad kayo na ganyang mag-solve no? you can bring out your calculators because you could you should know your tools yung, yung and writing 0 equals 0 yan equals um, 8 times 14 over ln over ln 3 plus 100 multiplying e raised to ln 3 over 14 ln 3 over 14 times t. Since wala naman tayong variable ng t sa calculator, let's replace it with x. Yan. And then shift, shift, and solve. Yan. Boom. Wala. May sabihin, may mali tayo sa ating ginagawa. Saan yun? May mali tayo kasi... Okay, balik tayo dun sa equation natin. Cancel, di ba? Cancel. Sige, balikan natin. Let's take a look. Recheck yung ating values. Okay, ayun, nakita ko na yung mali natin. Ang mali natin, nasume natin that C here is equal to the initial... Uh, Population P sub 0. 
So, dapat pala hindi. Kasi dapat, you have to solve it dahil uh, new expression of arbitrary constant to here. So, we must use yung ating uh, initial value to solve for the C. Okay? So, bra 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 Yan. We must solve for C here by using the initial value condition when t is equal to 0, p is equal to p naught, and then solve for c. Yan. Mali natin, inassume natin kaagad that c is equal to p naught from a previous model. So dapat, in solving for c in the new solution, we must apply yung ating initial value condition, IVP. And that is, um, applying this, we'll get from P equals uh, 8 times 14 over ln3 plus C e raised to ln3 over 14T. Applying this condition, magkakaroon tayo ng P naught equals 8 times 14 over ln3 ln3 plus C, yung ating hinahanap, e raised to ln3 over 14 times 0. And we know that e raised to 0 is 1. So 1 na to. So magkakaroon tayo ng P naught, alam natin, is 100. Yun yung kanina. So this will be 100 minus 8 times 14 over ln3 equals C. Ayun na. So since nakuha na natin si C, pwede na natin siya ngayong solve. Copyin lang natin sa glit ito. Yan. And what? Let's copy this. And apply yung ating value for C. Right? Yeah, so this is, I think, P. And then, yeah. So applying C, kakaroon tayo ng P equals 8 times 14 over ln3 plus yung C natin, which is 100 minus 8 times 14 over ln3. And then, of course, E raised to ln3 over 14 T. Yan. So, this is now our working equation. Now, applying, solving for T, when? Yan na. Yung gusto natin hanapin kasi is kung magiging extinct pa siya at kung sila ay magiging extinct or they will die out, when? So, when P is equal to 0, no, when will that be? So, applying it to our equation, let's copy this again. Oops. Kakaroon tayo ng Uh oh, sorry. Makita tayo na niya. <laughs> Yon, okay, sorry about that. So applying um the conditions sa ating equation, 
magkakaroon tayo ng um, zero equals eight times fourteen over ln three plus one hundred minus eight times fourteen over ln three. Uh, erase to t. Yeah, dito na natin pwedeng gamitin yung ating calculator by shift solve. Makakakuha tayo ng value na insert ulit natin yung ating calculator. Okay. Can't solve. So, ito equation natin kanina. 0 equals 8 times 14 ln 3 plus yan, 100 minus ito yan. The same, 8 over 14. 8 times 14 all over ln 3. Yan. Multiplied by uh, erase to ln3 over 14 times yung x na sinosolve natin. So, shift, solve, shift. Ito yun. Shift and then solve. x will give us, ayun. x will give us, or t will be equal to 50.4415. Days. So what is this? What does this mean? It's been if that kind of activity, you know, that we see will continue, all the insects will be will die out within fifty days. Okay. So the, to answer the to answer the question. To answer the question if um, <clears throat> yeah. To answer the question if mag, uh, mag, mag the die out by yes Mag the die out siya And it will only take 50 days to do so no? So to paraphrase The population will not survive for it will take only 51 days or 50 days, 50.44 days. For them to die out. Yeah. Okay. So 50.44, uh, 50 16 days and they will die out. All right. Let's move to our next question. So suppose, suppose a student unbeknownst to him is COVID-19 positive. He went to party hard with, say, with the said community of 1,000 people who were COVID-19 free in the opening of the new said building. If it is assumed that the rate at which COVID-19 spreads is proportional not only to the number PFT uh, of the infected students, but also the number of not infected students, how many infected students will there be? Six days after the party, if it was observed that after four days, the students infected were 50. Okay, let's try a scenario na pag nagbalik yung klase, no? And compute. So let's try and quantify the problem by identifying the given. So, um, sabi dito, 
Initially, um, suppose a student unbeknownst to him is COVID-19 positive. So he went to a party hard to he went to party hard with the Sayat community of 1000 people who were COVID-19 free. Sa so, makatuwid, nung una, kung titingnan natin yung buong storya no ng, ng infection, una iisa pa lang infected at yung infected ay yung Sayat student nga na hindi niya alam na infected siya. So initially, when t is equal to 0, no, the number of let's say p population of infected students is 1. Isa pa lang siya. Tapos ang sabi, in sa last sentence, um, how many infected students will there be 6 days after the party if it was observed that 4 days, after 4 days, the students infected were 50. So after 4 days daw, when t is equal to 4, the number of students were 50 na, na infected. Ang tanong, Ang tanong ay kung kailan or kung gaano karami ng tao ang may infect 6 days assuming na walang um, ayun, assuming that the rate at which the COVID-19 spreads is proportional not only to the number P of T of infected students but also to the number of not infected students. So gaano do karami na after 6 days? ang magiging infected. Alright. So, let's analyze the problem. In this problem, ang sabi, um, the, if it is assumed, dun sa uh, second sentence, if I'm not mistaken, if it is assumed that the rate at which the COVID-19 spreads is proportional not only to the number P of T of infected students, but also to the number of not infected students. So, let's put that out in a no, no, mathematical equation. Sabi niya, the rate daw of infected people, let's say dp over dt um, represents that rate, is directly proportional to what? To the number, to not only the number of students p of t, so p, no? But also to the number of students not oh, sorry, but also to the number of not infected students. So kung meron tayong um, one thousand na total population ng uh, ilan ba yan? Ah, sorry. Ayun, kung meron tayong uh, population ng say at community na nakipag party ng one thousand people, okay? Ibig sabihin, kung pumasok ka ng wala pang infected, eh di 1,000 pa yan. No? If, uh, if a person P is infected, no? and it is directly proportional to the person infected and also not infected, eh di yung not infected ay 1,000 minus P. For example, 1,000 people yung nasa loob, merong isang pumasok na infected na 1, eh di ibig sabihin, merong pang 999 na hindi. Tama. Kung merong 5 infected na pumasok sa SEAT, tapos 1,000 sila lahat doon, ibig sabihin, merong 995 na hindi pa infected. So, in other words, directly proportional siya, not only to the number of students that are uh, infected, but also to those who are not yet infected. So, kung ito yung relationship nila, then we can introduce a proportionality constant, dp over dt is equal to k p 1000 minus p. Yan. Kung mapapansin natin, this equation ano, is actually also similar to dp over dt equals k p m minus P, which is what? Correct. Verhulst. Model. Ayan. Where, of course, M here is 1,000. So, problem na to. So, having that said, this is a logistic equation. We can solve for this. No? Actually, na derive na natin siya on a previous um, example on the discussion on Verhulst. But 
in this case, we can use 1000 directly. No? So, um, solving this by separable, we'll have dp all over 1000 or p 1000 minus p equals k dt. Yeah. And integrating both sides, yeah, we're going to get um, these two functions here. Now, this one, alam natin, can be solved by power factor decomposition, partial fraction decomposition. So, let's solve that by PFD. Uh, we have P, 1000, minus P, that is 1, can be decomposed as A over P plus 1000 minus P all over B. Yeah. So, if we multiply an LCD here, And we have an LCD of the equation as P, 1000 minus P. We're going to have an equation that is equivalent to 1 equals A, multiplying ito, no? To this whole equation. So, A times 1000 minus P plus B. And then P. Ayan. So, expanding further, we'll get 1,000 A minus AP plus BP. So, by systems of linear equation, no? by systems of linear equation, We'll get for constant, we'll have 1 equals. Hmm, ano ba dyan yung mga may constant? Ito. Ito lang, no? Kasi P here is a variable. And so we have 1000, then A. Therefore, A is equal to 1 over 1000. Now, how about yung ating p variable? We have, actually, wala siyang equivalent. So, p is equal to 0. Or 0 equals, ano yung mga merong variable na p lamang dito? Ito yun. ap, tsaka bp. So, combining, meron tayong negative a plus b. Therefore, b is equal to a which is also equal to 1 over 1,000. Yeah. Oops. 1 over 1,000. Ngayon na nakuha na natin si A at si B, we can therefore say na yung ating partial fraction composition here, sige, lagay natin dito, no? We'll actually produce... 1 over 1,000 all over P plus same 1 over 1,000 over 1,000 minus P. Okay. So, substituting this back dun sa ating integral or dun sa ating uh, rather um, derivative or DE, differential equation. So, yung ating um, um, dp over p 1 minus p is equivalent to 1 over 1,000 all over p plus 1 over 1,000 
1000 minus P. Tama? So, bringing that back, balik tayo dito sa ating equation here, that is separable, kapihin ko to, balik natin yan dito, and substituting it, So, by separable, this now becomes integral of 1 over 1,000 over P plus 1 over 1,000 over 1,000 minus P. Of course, dp equals integral of kdt. Substitute, you know. kakaroon tayo ng pwede natin ilabas si 1 over 1,000 so this will become 1 over 1,000 integral of dp over p plus um, dp all over 1,000 minus P. Equals, of course, the integral of KDT. Yan. You can move 1,000 here, cross-multiply. Magkakaroon tayo ng LNP. Minus ln 1000 minus p. Kasi u is equal to 1000 minus p. du equals negative dp. So itong negative na to, ito yun. Yes. Equals. Move natin yung 1000 dito. K. And then T, of course, plus C. Yon. We can further um, simplify this. We're going to get 1,000 minus P all over P. It's equal to 1,000 K, T plus C. Ayan. If I raise this to E, Ano makukuha ko? I can cancel out Ellen. Magkakaroon ako ng P all over 1000 minus P equals E raised to 1000 KT plus C. Tama? But we know that um, this is also equivalent to E raised to C. Right? And we know that E raised to C is also equivalent to C. Yan. You can solve for an expression of P. And that is um, if we multiply P to both sides, or 1,000 minus P, to the right-hand side, kakaroon tayo ng um, 1,000 minus P multiplied by C e raised to 1,000 K 
kt okay so we can expand this to 1000 c eris to 1000 kt minus p c eris to 1000 kt you can bring this back to the left hand side so magkakaroon tayo ng 1 plus um C e raised to 1000 kt p equals 1000 c e raised to 1000 ole kt solving for p meron na tayong expression now 1000 c e raised to 1000 kt all over 1 plus C e raised to 1000 kT. Ayan. Now that we have our equation, now we have to solve for yung ating dalawang um, arbitrary constants, which is k and which is c. Okay. How do we solve that? When yeah, applying yung ating initial value condition, we have our IVP. Sabi natin, initially, when t is equal to 0, the population, the initial pop is equal to the initial population, which is 1. You know, and then we can solve for C. What is C? So substituting the these values, pagpunta rito sa ating equation, gagaran tayo ng p not, di ko na susulat no, equals one thousand c e raised to one thousand k and then multiplied by zero all over one plus c e raised to one thousand k and then multiplied by zero. But we know that e raised to 0 is equal to 1. So we have um, p not over 1000 equals c over 1 plus c. Tama? So can further reduce this or um, to find an expression for c Yan. You can solve for C by multiplying 1 plus C, expanding. Tamba. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Alam ko na, pag tinataman ka na, pwede kang mag-calculator. <laughs> so... Sige, labas natin si calcul natin. Alam natin that P is equal to 1, right? P naught is equal to 1. Ito yun. So this will be 1 over 1,000 equals C over 1 plus C. So C is equal to, by shift solve, no? Lagay natin, yung values natin sa calcul, no? So let's use yung variable natin. Let's use yung variable nating um, wait lang. Let's use yung variable natin na C, no? Just to demonstrate to you kung paano ginagamit yung sa kalagyan. Wait lang. Yan. Okay. It's back. Let's use yung variable na C sa calculator just to show you na po pwede siyang gamitin. Ano. So we have 1 over 1,000. Tama. 1 over 1,000 equals C. So alpha and then C down and then 1 plus C. 
Ang default kasi ng calculator, it solves um it solves yung um variable x. Tingnan niyo, shift solve yan variable error kasi ang default niya is to solve for x. But we can def define a variable that we want to solve as long as you put a colon so shift ito and then write c. Yan. So ibig sabihin it will be solving the equation in terms of c. Shift calc ayan na meron na siya. So I uh put a value 1 para alam niya kung saan siya magse-start ng value. So c is equal to 1.001001 times 10 raised to negative 3. If I want to get a more um uh visually uh good value, pinito ko lang ang answer niya. 1 over 99. 999. If I want to express yung, di ba, ano yun, uh, 1 times scientific number into a uh, fractional expression, edi 1 over, edi ANS equals lang. No? Tapos yung calculate na yung bahalang mag, ano for you. So C is equal to 1 over 999. Ngayon na nakuha na natin yung C natin, we can now move on to solve our K. Ayan. And that is when when t is equal to 4, sabi niya, di ba? When t is equal to 4, the population daw was, or the infected people were 50 after 4 days. You can figure out k here. Ayan. So, solving uh, yung equation natin is eto. Tama. Pihin natin to. And so, applying yung ating values, if this is 50, we have 1,000. Nakuha natin si C and that is 1 over 99. 999. Erase to 1,000 KT. All over 1 plus C. Erase to, yung C nga uli natin is 1 over 999. Yun. Erase to 1,000 KT. Can solve for t, or rather k, given t. And by using shift solve again. Shift solve. By using shift solve. Paano yun? Balik tayo sa calc u. Tapos input natin yung values natin. Yung values natin, we have um, 50 equals 1,000 times 999 inverse tapos multiplied by E raised to 1,000 K which is, sabihin na natin, let's call it X times T which is 4 ayan Equals 1 plus, ganun ulit, 999 inverse multiplied by E raised to 1000, ganun ulit, X times 4. Ayan. Then shift solve for X. This will give you a value of K equals... 9 point something something. Nine point nine zero five. Yeah. So we have nine point. Nothing ko meron siya expression for ano, fractional expression. Wala, yun na talaga siya. <laughs> so nine point nine nine zero five eight times 10 raised to negative 4. Pwede mo rin namang tandaan na since sinif solve mo siya, sinif solve mo siya for x, nakasave siya sa x. So, recall mo lang yung x. 
Ayan, ayan na siya. Ayan. Handy siya kasi magagamit natin siya later. Now na nakuha na natin si K, yan, we can now proceed to We can now proceed to Ay, shucks, wait lang. Alright, now that we have K, we can now substitute it back dito sa ating um, equation, working equation. Okay. Which is um, this one. Okay, so copy natin yan. And we can now solve for yan. Solving for um, the population T, right? When T is equal to 6. When t is equal to 6, what will the population of the in after 6 days, how many people will get infected in Sayat? No? Tama? Yun. So applying this here, kakaron tayo ng uh, shift solve na din, no? Let's use our calculator. Save na yung, yung value ng k natin sa x. So. So we have um, 1,000. Yung C natin, nakuha na natin kanina. Which is... Uh, yung C natin. 1 over 999. Right? 1 over 999. So multiplied by... Oops. Sorry. One uh, multiplied by nine nine nine, so that's nine 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 raised to negative one. Tama. Then e raised to one thousand. E raised to one thousand. Yeah, one thousand. Okay, natin naka save sa x. Oops. X and then yung T natin is 6 tama? Yan. So denominator gonna then 1 plus 999 raised to negative 1 multiplied by E raised to 1000 X Oops. X times 6. Oops, may syntax error tayo, and that is okay. Thousand C. Ah, okay, ito pala yung mali. So, dapat ito ay... So, we have to add this. So, this is negative 1. Yeah. Yun. So, after 6 days, the number of infected people sa Sayat ay magiging 276.22.17. That's it. Okay, so to paraphrase, after six days, after six days, there will be 
approximately about 200 ooh, 276 people infected yeah so 276 people Oops. Yeah. After six days, there will be uh, approximately about 276 people infected. Okay? Alright. So, I actually have one last problem here. Dami, no? <laughs> um, Gagawin ko na lang dito because of time. Makita ko pala na 3 hours and 30 minutes na rin itong video na to. So, gagawin ko na lang, I will post yung solution sa school book natin or sa ating elements. Okay? So, thank you very much for uh, joining me today. That ends my presentation. Meanwhile, our problem set 9 is this problems. Okay? We have 3 items. Alright? Sige. Thank you very much for your attention and your time. This is quite long. Pasensya na. I'm leaving you with these words. You have to know where you were to see where you are and look towards where you are going by Freddie Mackey. Thank you very much. God bless. So silence, let us pray. I will continue, oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of thee. St. John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.